And we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth broadcast. Uh, this broadcast is a live Bible question answer program where you can call in to the radio station with Bible questions, even your comments. And we will listen and address all questions and comments with book, chapter, and verse uh, from the Word of God. Now there was a question brought up last week at the end of the program. Uh, uh, it, well, actually it was a statement. And the statement was that Peter was the first pope of the church. Now, that was the statement. Now, if you're paying attention to uh, news and, and current events, you will know if you turn on your television program, there are some of you who are going buck wild about this Catholicism that uh, is uh, about to install what they call a new pope. Let me say on the onslaught, the Catholic Church is not the Church of Christ. Amen. It is not, they are not the people of Jesus Christ. And we're going to prove it from the Bible. Amen. And if they are the people of Christ, what you and I need to do is take these bi this Bible, these 66 books, and throw them in the trash. Because the Bible speaks nothing about Catholicism or even a pope. Now, I want to start with Matthew 16, 13. Now, the number to call is 281-837-2222. Let me give you that number. We're taking all calls and comments. And don't call with your opinion. Call with some Bible. Because the Bible has to be the authority on everything that we believe. 281-837-2222. Now, let's start, first of all, with establishing the church. In Matthew 16, 13, when Jesus came in the coast of Sensory Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some said, You are John the Baptist. Some were saying he was Elijah. And others said he was Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Now, these are all good men that they mention, but they're not the right men. Jesus is greater than all these prophets. He is, he is, the, he is the prophet of God. He is the spokesman for, he is not a way, he is the way. Amen. And so they claim that there were people that were saying that he was John the Baptist or Elijah, and they were wrong. And there's some of you listening today, still don't know who Jesus is. And so he goes on and he says in verse 15, he said unto them, Jesus said to the disciples, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now he got the right answer. That's exactly who Jesus is. He is Christ. He is Messiah, and he is the son of the living God. And Jesus tells him in verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Unto who? Unto Peter. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Now Peter made the right statement because God the Father revealed it to him. You made the right statement, Jesus said, and my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. And in verse 18, look what Jesus said, And I say unto you, that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Now notice this, and what Jesus is telling Peter, he's not telling Peter that you're going to be the first pope of the church. That's foolishness. That's not what he's telling him. He's telling Peter, based upon you making the right statement, that I am the son of the living God. Peter, you have made the right confession upon the statement that you made that I am the son of the living God. I am going to build my people. Notice he says, my church. My church, not church is. It's not plural. Jesus said, I will build my church. And in, in, in fact, what he's saying, there's going to be one, and it's going to belong to Christ. Now look what he tells Peter in verse 19. And I will give unto you, talking to Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Do you see that? Jesus says he's going to give the keys to who? To Peter. He's going to give the keys to Peter. In other words, Peter, you're going to get the spiritual keys that is needed whenever I build my church to allow people to get into the kingdom. Now, the, the burden of proof is on you to call in and show where Jesus said he's going to be the pope of the church. Mm -hmm. That's foolishness. That Peter is the first pope of the church. Nowhere in the Bible. We're going to prove it further. Now, I want you to notice. Now, Jesus told him he's going to give Peter the key. But in the statement, Jesus says, I will build my church. Which shows us that when Jesus makes this statement in Matthew 16, that the church had not yet been established. So when was the church established? Well, any Bible student who studies the Bible will know that in the book of Acts, chapter 2, you'll see that the church has been established. But notice in Matthew 16, again, he said that Peter was going to get the keys to the kingdom. Now understand this, the church 
is the kingdom. The kingdom is the church. That word is used synonymously. Peter is going to get the keys. He is going to be the one to give the keys that are needed for one to get into the kingdom. Amen. That's what Jesus is saying in Matthew 16. I'm going to give it to you, Peter. Notice, if you know your Bible, you know there were 11 other apostles besides Peter. But Peter is going to be the one with the keys. That's why it's no coincidence when the church is established, listen to me, radio listeners, when the church was established in Acts chapter 2, Peter is the one who is standing up with the keys to tell people how to get into the kingdom. Amen. When you look in Acts 2.14, it's no coincidence that Peter is lifting up his voice. The church was established in Acts chapter 2. Now, here's what I want to ask you. Was it Catholic? Was it Baptist? Was it Church of God in Christ? Was it Methodist? Was it Presbyterian? The answer to the question is no. No. It was the church of Christ. It is the my church that Jesus said he was going to build. Amen. See, there is no Baptist church in the Bible. Catholic church in the Bible. Those are man made religions. Let me say that again. It is a man made religion. And if you die in those religions, you're going to die lost, my friend. You have to be in the church. You have to be the a people that Jesus has established. Now in Acts 2, Peter is standing up and he is with the eleven, and he's lifting up his voice, and he is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's preaching about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He preaches it to the point to where the people who are listening are convicted in their hearts of sin, and they ask Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what do we need to do? Some of you listening out there, you're full of sin. You haven't even been born again. You're in these religious denominations. You don't even have the spirit of God because you've been taught wrong. You're in these denominational churches, Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of God in Christ, and the devil is even getting crafty. He's giving you to call yourself non-denomination when you don't even see that you are a denomination. You're lost Amen. because you haven't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ and been added by the Lord to the one church you read about in the Bible. In Acts chapter 2, they heard the gospel message. And they asked Peter, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter tells them, notice in verse 38 of Acts chapter 2, then Peter said, why Peter? Because Peter has the keys, radio listeners. Right. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's in the watery grave of baptism, when you obey the gospel, in the watery grave of baptism where Jesus gives you his spirit. And in Acts 2.47, they were praising God and having faith with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as being saved, should be saved. Notice, what church was it? It was the church that belongs to Christ. It is the my church. Now, let me say this before I toss it. Those in this Catholicism, foolishness. I'm going to say it again. It's foolishness. They propagate that the Pope and none of these foolish cardinals, which is a word you don't see in the Bible, cardinal, bunch of foolish and man-made doctrine. Pope, foolishness, nowhere in the Bible. They cannot get married. Now, for you who called in and said Peter was the first Pope, you got a dilemma with the Bible. Because you need to understand something, Peter was married. Amen. Now in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 14 and 15, let me show you this. For you who claim Peter was the first pope. Well, your pope in Catholicism can't, tells you you can't get married. These foolish cardinals and, and bishops in the Catholic Church, they claim they can't get married. And that's why their life is full of sin. That's why they're molesting boys. Because they're binding something on themselves that God didn't bind. They got these sexual desires, and instead of getting married, they sit around, they fondle, and they pedophile young boys. And all the Catholic Church do is they ship them off from one parish to another parish when they ought to be locked up in jail. Amen. Now, in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 14 and verse 15 of the Bible, let me show you, at Matthew 8, verse, I'm going to show you that Peter was married. To get rid of Peter was not a pope. He was not a pope, and he never claimed to be a pope. In Matthew 8, 14 and 15, when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife, his mother, laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. See what Jesus did? He healed Peter's mother-in-law. You need to know something. Peter was married. 
This Amen. foolish Catholic religion tells these men that they cannot get married. You got these foolish women calling themselves nuns. They're not getting married. Hmm. That's foolishness. Nowhere found in your Bible. Let me tell you something else about Peter. Peter didn't allow people to bow down to him or kiss a ring like they do in this foolish Catholicism. In Acts chapter 10, I want you to turn there real quickly. Acts chapter 10 and verses 25 and 22. I know you might not like it. You might not, you might be upset, but let me tell you something. I've become your enemy because I tell you the truth. You need to wake up before it's too late. You better hear me talking now before you stand before Jesus on the judgment and get out of this foolishness and start listening to the Bible and what the Holy Spirit says. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 25 and 26, I'm going to show you. If Peter was a pope, like you claim, and, and, and you believe he was a pope, why is your pope accepting worship in Catholicism? Peter didn't do that. In Acts 10, verse 25 and 26, and as Peter was coming in to Cornelius' house, that's where he went. He met him. Look what Cornelius did. He fell down at Peter's feet, and he worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up! I myself also am a man. Amen. Now why is this foolish guy riding around in a bulletproof vehicle with a funny-looking cartoon hat on and a robe? Why is he allowing people to bow down to him and kiss his ring? It's foolishness, radio listeners. Jesus is the King of Kings, and He is the Lord of Lords. We got these foolish people on TV calling this man the Most Holy. Let me tell you something. There is nobody most holy than God. Jesus is the Most Holy, and there is nobody on earth that is greater than He was. Jesus tells us in Matthew 23, 9 and 11, call no man father. This Catholicism religion walking around calling these men fathers, and He's not talking about in the earthly father sense. You are calling these men your spiritual fathers. Going to these men in this box behind a box and confessing your sins to them and having them to pray for you. It's foolishness. And you need to stop it before you die in your sins. The Pope is a bunch of foolishness. Catholicism is a foolish, it's a foolish religion. It's a false doctrine. And I know it's the majority. Uh, 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 it's the largest religion in the world today. But you know what? Jesus already told us that there's going to be few saved. There's going to be a lot that's going to be lost. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of them are in that Catholicism religion. And we're not just going to deal with Catholics. In the near future, we're going to deal with the Baptist, Church of God in Christ, Methodist, Presbyterian, and the list is endless. Anything that was established after the New Testament church is a false religion, and it's a man-made religion. And the burden of proof is on you to call in to show us in the Bible where your religion is right. The number of the call is 281 Eight three seven twenty two twenty two. Praise God. Thank you, Henry. Job well done. Truth spoken. You heard the phone number. Let me give it to you again. 281-837-2222. Now, if the man has called something out, you would think there'd be some Catholic, if it was a lie, that would say it's untrue. Some of you who are scholars, you would think that you would pick up the phone. I know you listen. This program is all in the Ukraine and everywhere. We communicate with people all over the world, England, everywhere, and uh, by way of, of emailing and discussion. So if this information is wrong, please pick up the phone and call and show us incorrect. Just use scripture because that's our foundational proof. I want to point out also some of you who are scholastic will try to say, well, Peter told Jesus they had forsaken their families and forsaken all. That just meant that they had put their families they turn their back, their family to do the work, which is what everyone does when he goes to work every day. But Peter still has a wife after Paul comes on the scene. 1 Corinthians 9, if you look at verse 5, Paul, Paul uses an argument. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, speaking of he and Barnabas who was single, as well as other apostles, with an S, and as the brethren of the Lord, and Cephas. So Cephas, which is Peter, still has a wife. Isn't that amazing? That means he has a wife after Jesus leaves, and he still has a wife. Amen. At the time Paul writes. So don't say he got rid of them. So uh, it, it shows deep hypocrisy within the Catholic Church, false doctrine of which they're the leaders of. The rest of you are simply escapees from Catholicism, and you started your own rebel army, but you too are against Christ. So I believe we have a caller on the We want to get this caller. Emilia, uh, hello, caller. Can you hear us? Uh, yes. Yes, my name is George, and I would like to uh, thank the brother who was just speaking uh, in reference to uh, exposing uh, 
uh, a lot of the false uh, teachings that are within the uh, Catholic uh, denomination of church. And I also agree that there are lots of false doctrines within all many uh, denominations which are man-made and and are not in compliance, strict compliance with the Bible. Amen. Uh, but my question is, is that uh, could uh, the speaker please uh, expound just a little bit about uh, some false teachings in the Church of uh, God in Christ and the Baptist Church? And I'll be listening. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Okay, well, one of the one of the many, you know, there's several. I know we got another caller. One of the the, the the things that they do in the denomination is they they don't separate uh, the old will from the new will. What I mean, the old law from the new law. Here's what we have to understand: when Jesus died on the cross, he established a new testament, a new will. That's why we follow Jesus today and not the law of Moses. Turn to John chapter 1. Let me give you Bible just real quickly. Jesus came to bring something different than what Moses brought. Amen. Moses brought the law, but Jesus brought grace and he brought truth. Okay, Amen. Jesus brought grace and truth. In John chapter 1 and verse 17, the Bible says, For the law was given by Moses, yes. but grace and truth... It came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so Jesus brought something different than what Moses brought. Now, there, there, here's one of the many things that they do in these in the back. Let me give you an instant. Tithing. You see, that's a lot of these false preachers' sugar, sugar stick. Yes. They teach that Christians are to pay tithes. In other words, you have to understand, tithing was something that was under the old law. They tell you you got to pay the first tenth of the monies that you bring in. New Testament Christianity, we don't teach uh, uh, any part of holding on to the law today. And when it comes to giving, we teach that one is to give from the heart. There is no base minimal amount that we are told uh, to give in our giving as New Testament Christian. That will has been done away. Amen. So as Christians in 2 Corinthians 9, let me just show you this. This isn't one of the many areas. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. How are Christians told to give today? 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7. Paul said, but this I say, he which sow it sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which sow it bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he had purpose in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. The Baptist church... Church of God in Christ, they'll teach you that you ought to pay the tithe. Yes, and do. what they do is they go back to Malachi, the Old Testament, 3, 9, and 10, and they ask, will a man rob God? You rob me and tithes and offering. Not understanding that we are not under any part of the law. Amen. See, if you're going to hold on to the part of tithe, you got to hold on to the part of keeping the Sabbath day, which was a Saturday. Why aren't we worshiping on Saturday? The Sabbath was Saturday. Because we're not under any part of the old law. Mm -hmm. Now, you might say, well, what's the problem with that? Well, when you try to hold on to any part of the law, Paul writes to Christians in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 4, what happens is you fall from grace. Mm -hmm. He says in Galatians 5, 4, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, he says you are fallen from grace. And so you can't hold on to any part of the law. They hold on the tithe. Uh, they, they, they have instrumental music in their worship service. You don't see any instrumental music being used by Christians. In the old law, did they do it? Yes. Psalms 150, did they do it? Yes. But it's not in the will of Christ to use instrumental music. They're calling their preacher reverend, which is against the law of God which is a name referring to God. And we're going to deal with more on that in the next couple couple of weeks. And so we're going to ask that the radio listeners please tune in. The number to call is 281-837-2222. Brother Ozan, you have anything you want to elaborate on uh, that, brother? Yes, Henry. Thank you, and God bless you. This is what I love about Christians. They give answers from the Bible. And uh, do we have another caller? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Uh, okay, we're going to go ahead on and uh, address that next caller. Hello, caller. You're hey, live bro. on the air. <laughs> Mm -hmm. How you doing? Great. So in Acts 10, uh, 44, when Peter is speaking in Acts 10, Peter is the leader. Is that not the truth? No, we, hold on. We, uh, let me ask you a question. See, we, we're, we answer the question. Let me ask you a question. You were the one that called in last week. We got, I'm, see, we, no, 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 hold on. We, no, no, hold on. What we can't do is we can't allow yeah, you to yeah. chase us around the scriptures. And we're not going to chase you around the scriptures. I'm reading the Bible, Okay, but, but, but hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Do what I want to ask you. You called in last week and you said that Peter was the first pope. That's right. That's what you said. 
I now, said he was and he is. Okay, now, now let me ask you this. He's can, the first head of the church. Okay. Can, I didn't say he was the Pope. Okay, but that, that was an I incorrect. He's the first head of the okay, church. Okay, so let's slow down. Slow down. Now, let's turn to Colossians 1 18. Is Peter the head of the church? And We're going to see. No. The no, answer is, is no. Not. We, let's look yes, at, he is. According oh, to this, he's the one doing the speaking. He's okay. not the oh, head. Okay. What, what are you sir, doing this, sir, we're trying to be patient with you. Now, hold on and listen. You can answer the so, question. No, we're going to answer with Bible. You want us to give what you want to hear. I'm reading the Bible, man. Okay, here we go. Colossians 1.18. Oh, there you go. Colossians 1.18. There we go with the Bible. That's it right. says in Colossians 1.18, and, 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 and he is before all things. And Colossians 1, 17. I'm going to start there. Matter of fact, let's start with 16. Yes. Start with 15. Yes. Look Who is me. the image of the invisible God? Talk about Jesus. The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he, talking about Jesus, is the head of the body, the church. Okay, great. Who is the beginning? I mean, I'm not through. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead? Ma'am, cut him down. Cut him down. We can't. He, he's not listening to be taught. Turn him off. He doesn't want to be taught. Now he's made a statement, real listen. He called in last week the same foolishness that Peter is the head of the church. Now the Bible, Paul the apostle, tells us in Colossians 1:18 that Peter is not the head of, and Peter never claimed to be the head of. That's what I got a problem with. He's trying to make Peter something Peter didn't even claim to be. Amen. In Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body, the church. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Now, just because Peter is the one speaking in Acts chapter 2, doesn't make him the head of the church. Amen. Peter is the one who has the keys to the kingdom. He is giving the message the, to the, the, and giving the spiritual keys the keys that all people must receive in order to get into the kingdom or the church. See, there's only one head, and that's Christ. There's only one king that sits on the throne, and that's Jesus. Peter never preached himself. He preached Jesus and him crucified. Number to call 281-837-2222. We have two callers on the line. Hang on, one of the callers. Uh, I want to stress some also to support what Henry said is, uh, how can somebody else's body have your head? Good teaching. And that's why Jesus used the term. Let me ask you a question. You got a body with somebody else's head on it? See, that's ridiculous Amen. in explanation. If it's Christ's body, it only has to have and can have his head. Unless so it's an it, alien, a deformed. Uh, uh, that's the only way. And the idea mm -hmm. is, is I understand some of you will get excited about people with more than one head through deformed. But does your head get removed and their head is left? That's ridiculous. Amen. So we'll take our next caller now. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead to the next caller. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yes, go ahead. Man, if you lie on the word of God, you're lying on anything. You Let's turn him off. Yeah, and, and see, that's that. Now, now see, I uh, want the audience to understand. You see, when you ask an individual a point blank question and they can't get the answer the problem is obvious I don't have an answer uh, to call up and say we'll lie on the scriptures H-E-A-D was just read Greek, Hebrew, whatever you want to look at Chaldean, it's head Amen. he said it was Peter the scriptures are clear it is not Peter now, had it had Peter's there, or the word wow, you, you're the head, then that'd be a beautiful argument. So we're going to move on to... A you know what I find, Brother Hosea, yeah. is when a person can't attack the message, yes. they try to attack the messenger. Oh, See, he has no, no, no recourse to attack the message, yes. and so it, now what they resort to is attacking the messenger. Exactly. And that's why we resort, radio listeners, to the Bible. Just call in with your Bible. That's what we ask him. Give us Bible where Peter said he's the head, and he has none. Number to call, 281 Hey man, is that the last caller? All right. Now I want to support. No, two more. I got two more. Okay, more. wonderful. That's beautiful. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Caller, turn your radio down. Turn your radio down, caller. Turn your radio down, caller. Okay, we cannot hear. We.
they are. I don't know what's going on. Yes, sir. Uh, because she was a gentleman, and she I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, okay, thank you, Carla. Uh, that was our caller speaking of uh, concerning, I couldn't hear all of the statement. Uh, I did hear the part uh, that said uh, about Deborah uh, not going into the battle uh, with uh, Barack, but she inspired him to go. She went and watched the battle, which is what he was requested, being a fearful man. And uh, to be a judge is not a gospel preacher. Amen. And that's one of the things, I don't know if our call alluded to that, but the statement is correct as much as we could hear, is that uh, Deborah did not go into the literal battle. But nevertheless, had she went in and slayed many men, still a soldier physical is not a gospel yes, preacher, elder, deacon, or Bible teacher okay. with authority as listed in Ephesians 4 and 11. It isn't an apostle and it isn't a prophet in that sense. So, therefore, we have to stick with the New Testament as Henry pointed out. I think we've got another caller. No, we don't. Okay, that's it. So now I want to look at 1 Corinthians time, chapter 3. Oh, our time, time is up. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go ahead on and sign off now. We thank Henry for a job well done. Uh, we thank you, all of you, for your calls, including uh, the gentleman referring to himself as blind man, displaying why you should study the Bible and do not become blind man. With faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, you can become a child of God. You'll be baptized by the Spirit into the church of Christ, the one church. And if you live faithful, God will give you a crown of life that will not fade away. Revelation 2.10. We leave the faithful saints with Romans 16.16. 16, the church of Christ salute you.